Good morning. Welcome back to Crosspoint Church's Rocky Railway, our virtual VBS for 2020. My name is Mark Langner. So glad to have all of you back. I uh, hope that as you and your parents sit down to watch today, uh, that you'll enjoy the music, that you'll participate in worship of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate that Jesus' power pulls us through. Hope you enjoy today. Great music, great lessons, great activities, some fun videos. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, let's get going. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and i love that old cross where the dearest stand best for a world of lost sinners was slain so i cherish the old rugged cross till the nail of peace at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it one day for a crown On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old My trophies and last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a So I cherish, I cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Power in the blood. 
Hey guys, my name is Joseph Fowler. I'm the student pastor here. Welcome to day five of our Bible teaching for VBS. I hope that you've enjoyed all of the weeks of virtual VBS. I know it's a little different this year, but it's still really, really good. And so I'm glad that you're joining with me and we're gonna dive into the Bible a little bit. You heard from Pastor John all about putting your faith in Jesus. Now, if you did that, if you are one of those people who you, you said yes to Jesus and you asked him to save you from your sins and to save you and, and give you a place in heaven, congratulations. That's the best decision you'll ever make. And I'm here to tell you with our Bible study today, we're going to learn how being a Christian is about more than just getting to heaven one day. Jesus left us with some things to think about and some things to do. One thing is, how do we live as a church? I know you were, you we're all part of Cross Point Church, so that means some things. But 2,000 years ago, what did the very first Christians, the very first people to say yes to Jesus, what did they do? So we're going to talk about that in Acts. But we know that Jesus left us with one command. He said, the best thing you can do as a Christian, how to live like a Christian, is to one, love God, and then love others. And we're going to talk about how the first Christians did that. In Acts chapter 2, we see in verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship of the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And then it tells us even more in chapter 4. And this is starting with verse 32. It says, All the believers were of one heart and one mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything that they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy people among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses, they sold them and they brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need. So guys, there's a lot of times we are tempted to be very, very selfish. Maybe it's with your brothers and sisters. Maybe you're a little bit selfish with your stuff. Maybe it's with friends. Maybe it's with your family. Maybe it's just your you think about how much you can get for yourself sometimes. And we're tempted to sin by being greedy sometimes or by being very selfish. But Jesus told us to love one another. And we see the first church, what did they do? First, they loved God by worshiping him, praying together, to hear from the word. The apostles were like Pastor John. They were preaching the word and the people were listening. They were talking about it. They were talking about how much God had done for them in their lives. And they did all of this together and then they loved one another. It says they gave generously. They were generous to one another. They were not selfish. And when they were tempted to be selfish, they were reminded of how good it was to share all of their possessions, to share everything they had. It said there was no needy people among them because even when there were people in need, they would sell things and collect the money and give it to the needy people. Wasn't that awesome? How the first church was together being so generous and loving one another. When we love one another, that honors God. And in fact, 
it says the church was growing day and day and day by the thousands. Don't we love when more and more of our friends come to our church, when more and more of our friends say yes to Jesus, when they get saved, just like you might have done the other day when Pastor John led you in that prayer of salvation, when he led you in the gospel. When we hear the word and we say yes to Jesus and we're saved, we love it when our friends do the same thing. So we want our church to grow. And God was using the very first Christians to grow by the thousands. And it was because they were loving each other so well and so generous to one another. It said they were all of one mind and one heart. What that means is if we want our friends and family to get to know Jesus, we have to be of one mind and one heart. We have to be unified. And the Bible talks a lot about what this looks like. But think about it like a team. Maybe you've been on a baseball team or a soccer team. And maybe you've learned how on a team... There are lots of different positions. Like on a baseball team, there's a pitcher, there's a catcher, and all of the bases, and then there's outfielders, and everybody can't do just one thing. What if everybody wanted to be a pitcher? Well, if everybody was a pitcher, there would be nobody in the field to catch the ball. If everyone was really good at hitting, but really bad at catching the ball, then you would have lots of scores on both sides, and no one would ever know who was going to win because... There was lots of hitting and lots of non-fielding. Or on the soccer field, what if there was everybody was really good at a goalie, but nobody could kick the ball down the field and score? It would be a really low-scoring game. There are certain positions for everybody on the field. That's what God has done for us. If you said yes to Jesus, His Holy Spirit lives in you. That's what we mean when we say, ask God into your heart. The Holy Spirit fills up your life. And he gives you special gifts, special talents, so that he can use you to share the word of God with everyone around you. And so when we're using our gifts, that's like being a part of a great team. You're doing your part to help the whole team succeed. And just like the first church, everyone was of one mind and one heart, but different positions, different gifts, all sharing the word of God together. And so... I want you to think about today, what is your position on the team? What can you do to share the word with others? What's your special gift that God has given you to help share the word? Maybe you can sing really well. And so through that gift, God uses you to lead other people in worship. Maybe you can talk really well and you can share that and people understand what you're saying. And so think about your own gifts. But ultimately, God left us with one command, to love people. And so John 12, 15 says, we love like Jesus loved. We love others the way he loved us. So I want to ask you today, as we finish up VBS, what are you going to do to love other people better? How can you love other people better? Maybe you have a problem with being selfish, and so you really need to think about how you can be unselfish. Maybe you need to be a little more generous. Maybe it's sharing your toys with your, with your friends or with your brothers and sisters. Maybe it's helping your neighbor. Maybe it's baking a cake for somebody and taking it to them. Maybe it's actually giving to the needy. Maybe you have some money that you've collected and you can share it with someone in need. There are no limit to the ways that you can show God's love to others. So make sure you use your gifts because you've said yes to Jesus and he's filled you up with his Holy Spirit. And because he's filled you up, you can go and love others well. So thank you for letting me share with you about the very first church. Go to Acts chapter 2 through chapter 4 and see how the very first Christians lived, the first people to say yes to Jesus. And if you need to make that decision, like Pastor John led you yesterday, you can always say yes to Jesus. Just pray that he would save you from your sins and that you would believe in him as Lord and Savior and he'll fill up your life with love and peace and joy. So thank you for being with me. I'll see you later. Renee and I'm 10 years old. Hi, I'm Alina and I'm 11 years old. Renee and Alina are great friends and they live in the beautiful desert of Southern Arizona. They love to hang out and be silly together. Their friendship has grown after they both joined an arts ministry at their church. Um, Ansel's Manos is a creative art ministry. We do puppets, we do shows, we do skits and 
stuff like that. And sus manos is Spanish for in his hands. It's an art ministry that uses performance to share the love of God. There is dancing, acting, and music. My favorite thing about performing is probably looking, like, um, at the end, looking at like all the kids all smiling and laughing and liking it. Sometimes performances are serious, and sometimes they're fun and silly. Regardless of being silly or not, one thing is true. Being a part of Ensus Manos has brought the entire team closer together. This puppet ministry helped us become better friends. And it's not just like me and her. Like other people, a lot more. Basically the whole group. Our group, like before, like we were all friends, like we were chill, but now we're like, we're like really, really good friends. And like we're always hanging out. We're always like laughing, making jokes. Jesus has used the ministry to bring the team together. This team of friends help each other to do the best they can to share God's love. My friends, like they help me not be nervous because like they were doing, they were doing it too and they were nervous, but at the same time they, they supported us. I was with my friends and I knew a lot of people in, from church. So was it that, that scary anymore? Serving Jesus together has helped Lena and Renee become great friends, but they both know who the best friend is, Jesus. He, he's like one of our like bestest friends ever. He is. <laughs> yeah. Renee and Alina know that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Jesus helps me make friends. Um, like God knows that I'm doing like this whole ministry for Him. And so it just helped me like become better friends with people. So He helped me like be friends with a lot of people, but still like worship Him and praise Him. In the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 12, it says, Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Jesus loved us all equally, so we should love everybody because as he says in the Bible, we're all brothers and sisters and love your enemies. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Um, today is our last day, Friday. I cannot believe it's already been a full week. Thank you so much for joining us for Crosspoint's virtual VBS. I hope you've had a lot of fun, and we still have our last day of games to play. So um, today what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with our scavenger hunt theme. And I have two different scavenger hunt themes to share with you that I hope that you will find fun and exciting. And families, again, this will be a great opportunity for you to take pictures or videos so we can see the kids at home having fun and participating in our in our activities um, because I can't see you um, through the screen, but you can only see me. And I'm really missing out on seeing you um, and watching you have fun and celebrate Jesus. So. Here we go. Our first scavenger hunt will be things found in your room, okay? So the very first one that you need to find is a book, all right? So you know the drill. You have 30 seconds. Go find a book and go. you to find is a toy. 
toy. Ready and go. for you to choose from. All right, our third item on our list is find something in your room that is soft. So find something in your room that is soft. Ready and go.
did you find your clothes hanger? All right, so our next item on our list is things found in your room is shoes. Do you have some shoes laying around in your floor? All right, go find some shoes. that will keep you warm. What is something in your room that will keep you warm? And go. maybe a jacket or a sweater. All right, so the next item to find in your room is a picture. Do you have a photo frame with a picture in it or just pictures laying around? All right, go find a picture and go. on our list is, do you have something in your room that has wheels? Find something in your room that has wheels and go. here. So, you should have found a book, a toy, something soft, some money, a blanket, something that makes noise, a hanger, shoes, something that keeps you warm, a picture, and something that has wheels. I hope that you found all of the things in your room for the scavenger hunt. So the second scavenger hunt that we are going to do today is called a photo video scavenger hunt. So I'm going to give you an action or um, maybe something to find and you can pretend to take a photo and video or if you have someone at home to help you with this, this would be a great photo video opportunity for you to send those in to us. So you can have your family take a picture of you doing this action or take a, a video of you doing this action, okay? So our first one for the photo video scavenger hunt is, let's see you playing air guitar. 
Ready and go. like to see you do is act out your favorite animal and maybe we can try and guess what it is. Ready and go. like to see you do is break out some dance moves. So can we see you floss or do the moonwalk? Just some examples. Ready and go. The next thing that we would like to see you do for our photo video scavenger hunt is let's make a silly face. How silly can you be? Ready and go. earlier in the week? Well, this time, take a picture of you being a statue of a prince or a princess or a king or a queen. How do they stand and how proper are they? Ready and go. right now. This is just pretend. Use your imagination and let's paint a picture. Ready and go. wash your hands. So you can sing a song while you wash your hands. You can pretend to do it or you can go really wash your hands and take a video 
video of you washing your hands while you sing a song. Ready and go. So now our hands are all clean. That's great. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pretend to bounce a ball. So it's probably a basketball that you're pretending to bounce. Or if you want to go grab a real one, you can, and you can show us your moves, and you can have your family take a picture or a video. Ready and go. jump rope. So you can either go grab your jump rope or we can pretend to jump rope. And let's see how many jumps we can do without tripping up. Ready and go. videos that you can send in to us. So now I'm going to share a game with you that you can play at home with your families. We have played this game before in second service in large groups. So some of our family or some of our students may already um, know how to play this game. And families, I encourage you to participate because this is a fun game to play at home. The name of the game is called Tableau. And a tableau is a still picture. So it's a picture that does not move. And so you would have someone that could act as a director or a teacher, and then they would give the group a tableau. So like um, a place. So for example, the director may say, your tableau is you're at a carnival or you're at the fair. And then Everybody that is working in the tableau will create that together. You have about 10 to 15 seconds to quickly talk talk it out and then strike your, your pose, your statue of your tableau. So you could have someone on a roller coaster or someone buying popcorn or someone winning a stuffed animal. Those are things that we usually typically do when we're at a carnival or a fair. So that's just an example. And then you can take it a step further and you can have the director or teacher give the place that you want the tableau to be. And then you can have one family member walk out of the room so they don't know what it is. And once they form the tableau, then that family member can come in and then they can try and guess where are they? Are they at the carnival or the fair? And so that's a great way to do it. And then another thing that you can do to add on to this exercise is each person that is in the tableau, they have one line to say. 
to help the other person who's trying to guess where they are. So for example, if I was buying popcorn and I'm sitting here with my box of popcorn and I have one in my mouth, I might say, mmm, this is so butterly delicious. Or if I'm on a roller coaster, I might be, ah! that might be my line because I don't like roller coasters, okay? So some other examples or locations that you can play your tableaus in, you could be at the grocery store um, or you could be at the beach. I know that seems to be a common theme that is coming up this week. Um, in our scavenger hunts. Um, you could be at a slumber party because we did a slumber party this week. So those are just some examples that you can do as you play the tableau game. So have fun with it and let's review our Bible verse for today. So today's Bible verse is from John 15, 12. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. So let's say that together. Ready? Shout it out. John 15, 12, love each other in the same way that I have loved you. Boys and girls, this completes our game activities for Friday as well as for the week for Cross Points Virtual VBS. I hope that you have had a lot of fun, and I know I've said it a lot, but... I encourage you to send in any pictures or videos that you took at home um, so we can see the experiences that you had during our virtual VBS. Um, we miss you so much um, and we can't wait for us to be together again. Um, Pastor Mark is going to close us out today, um, but before I go, I do have my special guest that would like to um, end us in prayer for our game activity. So come on, special guest. All right, so if you could please bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody that's helping us get through this virus and Thank you for keeping us safe and, and thank you for everything. Thank you for all the food and water and drinks you provide us. And thank you for um, this wonderful week of VBS and that we could do the VBS this year. Amen. Amen. All right, boys and girls, it has been a lot of fun. Please don't turn off your videos. Um, please stay on board right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Pastor Mark. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you have not already registered online, please go ahead and do that and so that you can get a free uh, VBS 2020 uh, t-shirt. We just thank you so much for understanding that Jesus' power pulls us through. You know, with all of our lessons this week, all of our music, all the worship that we've done of our Lord Jesus Christ, some of you may have made some decisions this week to follow Jesus the rest of your life. If you have done that, we encourage you to get in touch with uh, us at the church so that we can talk you through that decision or to talk to your parents uh, and then maybe they can give us a call as well. God bless and we'll see you soon. Thank you.